All right, so let's get started. This is 10.5, where we're going to discuss volume and surface area. Now, this is the last section for Chapter 10, so we should be really excited. We're on the end of this chapter. Talk about volume. What we're looking at is the amount of space that a substance occupies. So, for instance, this shape of a rectangular solid, the volume of it is how much will be occupied on the inside or the interior of this rectangular solid. And what it could be filled with is items such as um, a solid, it could be solid mass in there, or liquid, or perhaps gas. In this case, let's look at the formula. I'm just going to rewrite this. The vo uh, volume for a rectangular solid is length times width times the height. All right, and then for a cube, if you can notice right here, it says s to the third power. So on a cube, all sides are equal. So I'm just going to put a little tick mark on here. Show that that surface there is all sides are equal. So the volume of a cube is side times side times side. All sides are equal. All right, so let's practice. This problem says find the volume of the rectangular solid. So if we can recall, volume, put that to emphasize we're using V for volume. Volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. So let's go over to our shape and identify those items. So the six meters is my length. Four meters is my height, and the two meters is my width. So we're just going to substitute those measurements into our formula. Six times two times four. Six times two times four. We'll give you 48, and since we had meters, which you have to remember, this is six meters times two meters times four meters. And your answer is going to be cubic meters. So this rectangular solid will hold 48 cubic meters of a substance. This next image is a pyramid. To find the volume of a pyramid, it states on here that we are going to take one third times capital B, which is the base, times the height. So if I had to rewrite this one, I would say volume is equal to one third times the area of the base. And when we're looking here is, let's see if I can draw that. Close enough, there's my base. So we have to go and find this area of this shape right here, the area of the base. And then we're going to take this formula and still multiply it by the height. Now the height is the tallest point on your pyramid and it makes a vertical line down to the base and it creates a 90 degree angle. Thus it had that little square right here that says it creates a 90 degree angle with the base. So let's find the volume of this figure. If we recall, the volume formula is volume is equal to one third times the area of the base, times the height. They've identified the height for us as 18 feet. If you look at this base, we have a rectangle whose measurements 
our length of seven feet, that's my length, and a width of three feet. Let's fill in our formula. One third times the base is length times width, or three times seven, times the height, which is 18. All right, if you place this in your calculator or if you want to work it out by hand, good for you. We can do 18 times one third will give us six. And three times seven will give us 21. And if we keep multiplying this, we'll come up with 126 cubic feet. Or let me write it that way, cubic feet. Or another way to write this is 126 feet to the third power or cubed. Again, we found the volume of a pyramid. All right, so next we're looking at the volume of a right circular cylinder. So whenever I took at this picture, I always think of like um, a soup can and then the contents that it that fills it would be the volume that it holds. So in this case, to find the volume of a right circular cylinder, our formula is saying that you need pi times r squared times h. Just rewriting pi times r squared times h. Now remember this r is your radius. And we'll emphasize it on this picture by putting an r right there. And here is your height. So you need a radius and a height in order to find the volume. For this problem, it's asking us to find the volume of the cylinder. So first of all, we have to take a look at our image really well, identify the shape, and then identify what measurements have been provided. So we can see this nine yards is going to be the height of this object, the cylinder. And then we take a look at the 20 yards. Now the 20 yards, because of this dashed line here that goes across through the center of the circle and all the way to the other side, that is measuring the diameter, or D. And if we recall, the radius is halfway, so the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. Let me try a different color there. So we need half of the diameter to give us the radius. So the radius is equal to 10 yards, half of the 20. So now that we have the radius and we have the height, we can find the volume of this circular cylinder. So once again, the formula is volume is equal to pi r squared h. I will just insert those values, 10 squared times nine. And make sure you slow down and watch me on this part. We have pi, times 10 squared is 100. I'll do it by hand and do it the long way. Multiply my numbers, 100 times nine, 900 pi cubic yards. And for a moment, I'm gonna stop right here. 900 pi cubic yards. So when you have pi, the symbol pi, in your answer, this is called the exact value. On my math lab, 
it's going to ask you to find the volume in terms of pi. So when it says in terms of pi, it's telling you to leave the pi symbol in your answer. Now, let's say that it's asking you to round, find the volume and round to the nearest tenth. So in this case, we would take volume is equal to 900 pi. We would place it in our calculator. And notice I'm now using the approximation symbols. And put it in our calculator and find out some numbers that end up with decimal form. And I'm getting 2,827. And I'll carry it out to the hundreds position. Because we've chosen to round to the nearest tenth, we need to look in the tenth position and the number to the right of there. And since the number three is smaller than five, we do not increase or add one to the tenth position. So rounding to the nearest tenth, this becomes 2,827 and four tenths cubic yards. Once again, you can write yards to the third power or yards cubed. So this second answer is actually called the approximation. So be very careful when you're reading on my math lab. Is it asking for the exact answer? Then we would leave it as 900 pi cubic yards. If it's asking you to approximate, make sure you read to see where it wants you to round to, place it in your calculator, and then round appropriately. Our next shape is a cone. To find the volume of a cone, we will take the volume is equal to one third times pi times r squared times h. So if you look at this formula closely, you can see that you're going to need the radius again and the height. The radius and the height. Now, in order to, for us to find the volume of this fantastically shaped cone, we need to first identify that it's a cone shape and then identify these measurements. So I have 10 meters and 7 meters. Notice that the 7 meters starts at the center of the circle and goes out to the edge of the circle. So this is my radius. This other measurement starts at the highest point of the cone and comes all the way down and creates a 90 degree angle with the base of the cone. So this is my height. Recall the formula for the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. Filling in the information that we do know about this shape, we know my rate radius is seven meters, so that's seven squared times my height, which is 10. I will go ahead and work this one by hand also. So this is one third times pi, seven squared is seven times seven or 49. 49 times 10 is going to give me 490. And this will turn into a fraction, 490 over three, 
pi cubic meters, and I abbreviated cubic there. So in the Casio 115 calculator, if you were to place these values, the numeric values, the one third times 49 times 10, you may get a decimal, but if you hit the S to D button, it will translate that back into an improper fraction for you. Now remember, with pi symbol in our answer, this is called the exact answer. If we want to round to the nearest hundredths, then we would place 490 divided by 3 pi into our calculator. And we would get something like 513 decimal point one, two, six. Again, we're going to do the rounding in the hundredths position. So two is in the hundredths position. The number to the right of two is six. Six is greater than five. So that means I need to add one to this place value. So that will give me 513 and 13 hundredths cubic meters. In this case, I'm going to write meters to the third power, which is the equivalent way of saying cubic meters. And once again, this is my approximation. Our final shape is a sphere. And to find the volume of a sphere, we need to have the radius. So this says volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r squared, I'm sorry, r cubed, r to the third power. So we need definitely to know what the radius is from the center of the sphere to the edge should be the radius. For this problem, it's asking us to find the volume of the figure, which is a sphere, express the answer, and there it is, in terms of pi, and then round to the nearest whole number. So it's asking us to do two things, express the answer in terms of pi, and then round to the nearest whole number. So the first thing we're going to need in order to tackle this problem is, what is the formula to find the volume of the sphere? So again, that is 4 thirds pi r cubed. We'll go to our image here and notice that we start at the center of the sphere and work our way to the edge. And this is going to be a radius. So radius is 9. We'll use this information to fill in our formula. thirds times pi times 9 to the third power. When we place this into our calculator, we're going to get 972 pi. 972 pi. And the measurement is in meters. So I can say cubic meters or meters cubed. So this is the measurement in terms of pi. All right, next it says, and then round to the nearest whole number. So we're going to take this value, 972 pi, place it in the calculator. Since we're rounding to the nearest whole number, we need to carry out to the tenths position. And we're getting 3,053 and 6 tenths. 
and we are going to round this to the nearest whole. So we're looking at the ones position. We need to know if it stays a three or if it increases. This number to the right is telling us that we're going to increase this by one. So we have rounded to 3,054 cubic meters. Before we move on, I want to do a quick little refresher or a reminder about the units of measurement. When we were looking at the perimeter, let's say we were measuring feet. The perimeter is the sum of all sides. So we ended up with just feet. Think of that fence when we're walking around the fence line and we're just adding how many feet of fencing do we need around the fence, around the fence line. So the, you're adding just feet plus feet. But if we're going to say, let's go ahead and place carpet into our living room, we're looking for the area, which would be feet length times feet, which gives us the square feet. And lastly, we're looking at volume now. And notice it's three dimensional. So we have feet times feet times feet. And that gave us cubic feet. So this first option here, the perimeter, I'm just going to put 1D on here because that is just one dimensional. All right. So that is if we're looking at a fence line, let's say on a rectangle, we're just looking at those edges. Area is two dimensional. So in this case here on this rectangle, we need to know the length and the width in order to find the carpet. How much carpet do we need? And then when we look at the cubic, not quite really good, but a rectangular solid, we had to have the length, right? The length and the width, and then the height. So this is three dimensional. For the last part of this lecture, we're going over surface area. Now, when you're thinking of surface area, it is exactly just that, it is the surface of the shape that you're looking at. For instance, this first image is a cube and they're using SA for surface area. SA for surface area. And it says on here, the surface area is six times S to the second power. So if you think about this, what they're doing is S squared is basically like side times side. So they're finding the area on one of the sides and they know that there's six equal sides so if you find the area on one side you can multiply it by six and you will get the surface area for the entire cube if you look at the rectangular solid here it's telling you that you need to take two times the length times width plus two times length times height plus two times width times height. And what they're doing is grabbing the measurement of each side of this rectangular solid. And then you add them all together and you have your surface area. On the circular cylinder, it says two pi r squared plus two pi r h. And that would find the surface area of 
your cylinder. All right, so this problem is asking you to find the surface area of the rectangular solid. Again, the first thing you want to do is look at your image, identify the shape, and next identify what each measurement represents. So I will say on a rectangular solid, we need a length, a width, and a height. So this eight will be my length, the five, the width, and the three will be the height. And let's go back and grab that formula. So surface area, remember I'm gonna use SA for surface area. Surface, is, surface area is equal to two times length times the width plus two times the length times the height plus two times the height times the width. And we're going to go through and insert our values. So this is two times length is eight times width. plus two times the length times the height of three, plus two times the height times the width. And again, you can go ahead and work these through. Um, this first part is two times eight times five, which will give you 80. And two times eight times three is 48. And two times three times five is 30. If I add all of these items together, I will get 158 square yards. So remember, this is surface area and area is two dimensional. So for two dimensional, you're gonna have square yards or yards squared. Now I'll write it the other way here. Yards to the second power. And this concludes chapter 10.